What if I told you that the most dangerous person in the room is the person that you refuse to see? And what if I told you that your cousin that's doing 15 years is doing so not because of him, but because of you? And what if I told you that we have already met what could be one of the most treacherous yet useful characters the power universe has ever seen? Would you believe me? Before we get started on this lecture, let me introduce myself to those of you who are unfamiliar with me. My name is Kay Cam, and I'm your professor for this course. Welcome yet again to Criminology 101. Tonight's lecture is structured slightly different because our subject is none other than Lauren Baldwin. And I know some of you are probably wondering, why is Lauren Baldwin the topic for lecture two? She's not even a criminal for real. But what if I told you that there is far more to Lauren than what meets the eye? As a fan, I see her as an intellectual and affluent individual who has a bright future ahead of her. However, as a criminologist, my thoughts concerning her drastically differ. But for those of you who are saying that she's not really a criminal, you would be slightly right whenever we compare her to those in her social circle. However, though, we cannot ignore the fact that her providing false information on the stand under oath was technically a crime, therefore making her a criminal at the bare minimum. So considering the minimal extent of her current level of criminality, I decided that it would be best to take more of a predictive approach to analyzing Lauren. To help us get our brains started, we're going to start with the pop quiz. The pop quiz is simple. It's just one question. If you're able, please make note of your answer, because at the end of this lecture, I'll ask this same question again. And the purpose of this is to compare and contrast our answers so that we can see just how theory impacts our perspectives. Considering the entire power universe, Lauren is most likely to mimic whose criminal activity in the future. Now that we answered the question, let's go ahead and jump straight into this analysis. As a criminologist, I have spent years studying the why behind criminal behavior. And considering that I myself am a minority who grew up in a low socioeconomic environment, yet I graduated from a prestigious university, that why for me takes many, many forms. Keeping in mind where I come from, as I progressed in my academic career, I started to see things differently than my cohorts. I started to see people not just for who they are, but for what they could become, based on factors that I've personally witnessed be detrimental to individuals' livelihoods. See, I have dedicated my life to analyzing the criminality of potential or the potential in criminality. And what better person to sit here and analyze than someone who doesn't realize exactly what they're becoming? So based on the show so far, we know that Lauren Baldwin is a young, intelligent individual who comes from an upper middle class family. She has both of her parents, and the only drama in her life seems to be a controlling mother, an annoying ex-boyfriend, and an older brother who unfortunately suffers from addiction. In spite of her circumstances, she attends a prestigious university, she is enrolled in a rigorous program of study, and she strives to go to graduate school. However, as we know her today, she's had an ex-boyfriend whose ex-girlfriend is her attempted murderer. Her parents have been kidnapped by her ex's business partner. She became a snitch. Witness protection is now her life. And most importantly, she died, was rescued, testified, lied, and is now what we call in any universe a criminal. Now the real question is, how did we get here? Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of who Lauren is and what her foundation looks like, I think it's time for us to jump straight into the theory. Side note, this theory threw me for a loop simply because it is extremely complex and in all transparency, I had a difficult time reducing the information of this theory down to fit the time frame that I've been given for this video. So for those of you who understand this theory in a more in-depth manner, I apologize because I didn't do it justice. 
And for those of you who have no idea what this theory is, but you may feel like I could have or should have explained it more, I'm sorry, but I did have a time frame. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, back to the video. The theory that I chose for this analysis is the social learning theory in criminology, which was developed by Burgess and Ackers in 1966. The reason I chose this theory is because it will help us explain or understand the shift in behavior that has already occurred in Lauren. Not only that, but this theory will also serve as a great foundation for our predictions moving forward. The social learning theory states that individuals who differentially associate with peers or groups that hold attitudes favorable towards the violation of law have an increased probability of engaging in criminal activity. Ackers further polished this theory by identifying four mechanisms in which criminal behavior is learned. One, differential association. Two, differential reinforcements. Three, definitions. And four, imitation. Considering that we are taking a predictive approach in this analysis, we're going to focus on differential association and definition. Differential association is the premise of SOT, which states that intimate personal groups like family play a vital role in an individual's deviant behavior in early childhood. However, as an individual matures, the significance of family influence is reduced and the influence of peer groups increases. According to research, there are four modalities of association that affect outcomes of behavior, one of which is intensity. See, these modalities are socially defined as necessary or approved by an individual's peers. See, it is important to note that differential association is not to be confused with peer pressure because this mechanism of learning is a more subtle process that goes unrecognized. However, this association is extremely influential. Definitions The term itself refers to an individual's attitude towards behaviors. See, social learning theory suggests that an individual's exposure to other people's shared definition influences their development of their own. With that said, this mechanism states that the learning of criminal behavior involves the learning of techniques, motives, rationalizations, and attitudes. To put it simply, who you associate with determines your likelihood of engaging in criminal behavior, and over time, you begin to develop the same attitudes towards crime as those around you, no matter how extreme. At this point, it should be quite clear why I chose the social learning theory to do a predictive analysis of Lauren Baldwin. In my opinion, Lauren's character has undergone one of the most drastic behavioral shifts so far in the power universe. However, the change in behavior was not a result of her own actions. In fact, it was those around her that has led her and is leading her into a world of criminality. And you once told me that you never loved anyone to sacrifice yourself for them, so... What's interesting to me is that she can't quite see it. And as we learned, that is exactly what differential association emphasizes. But let me go ahead and give you guys a few examples. Remember when Tariq convinced her to distract a social worker so he can give Yaz a phone that she clearly wasn't supposed to have? Or when Professor Milgram convinced her to wear a wire in which she manipulated her using her fears? Or when Jenny Sullivan forced her into witness protection and then literally exploited the vulnerability in her memories? Or when Cooper Sachs decided to step out of his lane yet again to convince her to some extent that Tariq St. Patrick is this horrible, dangerous person. Or all the times Tariq met with her to try to convince her to do something that mainly benefited him. Not to mention the meeting in the park with Tariq, Braden, and Kane and her to get her yet again to recant her statement, which violence was used to get her to conform to their desires. All of which led her to lying on the stand and going against the sworn statement that she made under oath. As I said before, no matter how minimum, she is by definition a criminal. And the fact that they were able to get this intelligent, once innocent individual to do exactly what they wanted is the reason that I say she's impressionable. But see, that impressionability, if abused by the wrong individual could result in Lauren being one of the most useful characters for destruction. Why? Because she's seen, but she's invisible. 
She's intelligent, but she's gullible. She's safe, but she's uneasy. However, what's most dangerous about Lauren is not the person who sees her and uses her. It's the person that she knows but can't see. Herself. So, I must ask you again. Considering the entire power universe, Lauren is most likely to mimic who's criminal activity in the future and why. Dangerous, that's the point.